No, thank you for coming to Voyagers National Park. Um, I hope that you find this to be a great opportunity. Um, I know one of the things that I hope that you'll find is that we have the best campsites in all of the National Park yeah. Service, um, of all of the areas across the National Parks in the awesome. U.S. and everything. Because every single one of them is a lakefront campsite. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, Voyagers National Park uh, created in 1975. So Education ranger here at Voyagers National Park is in charge of many things, but one is the Junior Angler Program. All right, so can we give it up for Ranger Shannon? Woo! Our Junior Angler Program has been going on here. This is our first summer we've done it at Voyagers, but it started within the last 10 or so years. So it's kind of a newer program throughout the Park Service, but this here is our first year doing Junior Angler. It's pretty awesome. relationships to that of a redwood tree. So if you know anything about redwood trees, they uh, the deeps grow wide and not deep. So this summer we hope that you live within the embrace of each other, these new people that you've met. Two redwood trees beside themselves will reach out their branches and or their roots and as soon as they find one they intertwine their roots. Um, in fact redwood trees don't live alone. They, they can't survive alone. And I'm not saying that you can't survive without us, but it's better having people that are of your like mind, humans that have your like mind. So this week, let's live in the embrace of others. And just be good to each other. We're all different and quirky, and we have different personalities, and that's what makes us great people and human. So be tolerant and sweet and kind, and uh, remember Marvin and Huck say, be good humans, so make sure you do that. You're never gonna be together again like this. These 13 people in this place at this time. So let's just really soak it up. Um, within your groups, we're gonna have a little nature knowledge karaoke kind of thing. We're gonna play something called bird karaoke. Oh! Like 
why are you here? So why are you here for yourself? What, what personal reasons do you have for being here? And then what professional, what do you want to get out of it professionally, no matter what you do as a career? I want to share this quote with you. David Sobel wrote, if we want children to flourish, if we want them to come truly empowered, let us allow them to love the earth before we ask them to save it. Trees reaching the sun, Just waves hitting the shore, setting the sun in my eyes, squirrels chattering at us, the breeze rustling, the water softly laps, warmth from the sky, found my happy place, loons calling out, nature's beauty rocks. The book that we're using this summer is Mimic Makers. This part is called No Showers for Sharks. <laughs> Sharklet is a thin film that can keep everything from ships to submarines spotless. The photos have. Thank you, ma'am. Put it somewhere in the I do that all the time. <laughs> Don't pass out. I didn't pass out. <laughs> you got that going. I was told my whole life I was full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> that again that was weak and that's gonna make our video look really bad so let's try that again welcome everyone to day two Woo! we have been in some beautiful classrooms this summer in nature but come on now this is very very beautiful so I would like to introduce you officially to my friend Brianna or Brianna I don't know where you're from um, I think Brianna's more correct. I just, I'm Brianna because I'm from the South. She has made at every turn, she has uh, helped us find equipment, programming, where we should probably get food, where the porta potty is, not the hole in the ground, all the things. So she has made all of this happen. I'm going to let her tell a little bit more about herself, then we can introduce Shannon, and then we'll start this morning's activity. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, so I know this squirrel is throwing stuff at us. <laughs> no, yeah. it's like get out of here. Uh, okay, so I'm Brianna Trigg. I am the Education and Outreach Director of Voyagers Conservancy. I'm sorry, a little bit about the Voyagers Conservancy and how we're connected to Voyagers National Park. So Voyagers Conservancy actually used to be called the Voyagers National Park Association, and we were formed before the park existed in the 60s. Oh. Uh, and the reason we were formed was because the group that came together said we want a national park here yeah, at Voyagers and they were uh, some of the instigators that really helped get the legislation through Congress to say this is important, we need a national park in northern Minnesota. We're hitting our 50th year, it was 218,000 acres, 40% of it water, um, and We've talked a little bit about this, but named after the French Canadian Voyagers. I would like you to get into a pair and have a conversation about what do you think of when you think of a national park. Uh, in Ontario, yes, yes. Really right. to, yeah. Yeah. make sure it stays like that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everything destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Park Service, as they came together, did create a logo that's quite recognizable, the Arrowhead logo. And I'm going to go through the Arrowhead logo and the components of that and tell you about what each of those components mean and how those pieces show up here in Voyagers National Park. So what are the things specifically that were called out? The squirrels were not called out. Um, all right, so first thing is the Arrowhead. All right, so the next piece on our uh, Arrowhead is uh, the landforms. Next one, they have added, um, anybody recognize this tree on the logo? I think it's a sequoia. The sequoia. Mm-hmm. All right, and then we add the bison. So what are the animals? Um, okay, so the last piece on our arrowhead is this little white lake piece. It's a lake. It's water. 
Um, so those are the elements of uh, our beautiful um, National Park Service logo. Yes. What our challenge is for you to do is to create, what would you draw in the logo for Voyagers National Park? Is have you turned back to a partner again so that you can tell all of the details uh, of your uh, drawing and then we'll put them up kind of all in one group so we can get a picture of everybody's. Um, so why don't you go ahead and turn to a partner near you and share what you put in your um, logo for Voyagers and why. Okay. But Voyagers Conservancy, we don't only do our education program. Um, um, and then also at the Conservancy, we uh, purchase uh, the scientific equipment for uh, the park. We fund positions in science and in interpretation and education. Um, we fund projects. We are that philanthropic partner in the way that we can uh, support Voyagers National Park. All the challenges we've created for PT and English and arts. And Hand lens to use with your things. Now obviously your phone will do it too, but this is more exciting that you can get a hand lens. So 20 minutes and then we're going to come back and debrief that. Okay, when you hear me how you have five minutes and you're going to return right here. Break. Go level up. So a big part of my job is programming. So the junior angler one is like my big one. And then I also help with the dark sky events that we do every week. Um, so we have got two games for you guys about invasive species. Like in the wild, right, the fish that are eating the most food are going to be bigger fish. Um, Tiffany, unfortunately, is a zebra mussel. Oh. Five second head start to eat as much as she wants. Five. Now everybody else can go. <laughs> so now Tracy is also a zebra muscle. Hey. I'm like this. <laughs> we are, we're power posing. Well, I get it there. Eat what you can. Hi, it's a Hi, it's a <laughs> and we're gonna use lead free tackle. All right, woo, congrats! Woo! I don't we're gonna explore a little bit in our mimic, mimic makers first. It's called Drink Like a Bug. Show it to you. It says, the dew bank bottle collects drinking where it reminds me of in your journal. There are some objects up here. Um, I'd like you to take an object that you feel comfortable with. And we're gonna take these and look at them. And I want you to answer, just take a, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me, okay? Dig a little bit deeper. This is a wonderful tool called the private eye loops. Um, these are a, a, a sort of a, a form of jeweler's loops. So you're, you're going to do the same activity again. You're going to notice, wonder, and tell us what it reminds you of. But this time you're going to be looking at it through a different eye. Right? Can we give Tracy? Hmm. <laughs> what are we going to do? Thank you. A round of applause. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I would like for everyone to take one Scrabble tile. Relaxing. Over the top. Extraordinary. Experiences. Gathering. Resources. Introspective. Infinite. Awesome. Delicious, yeah. <laughs> In nature. <laughs> um, I would like to turn it over to the one and only Rodney. We started talking about soundscapes as an option to level up, right? Some of you are hearing some very scary sounds right now, right? Buzz, buzz. So, um, for soundscaping, you can use words, you can use numbers, you can use onomatopoeia, you can draw a smudge and label it. So, you get the picture, right? There is no qualification for being able to complete this activity in your journal. 
what you do is you find your place, you center yourself for just a minute. I think we'll have 10 minutes tonight. Definitely 12 buckling. and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. We have found stories that are out there that have been we've been given permission to share and a song to share too. No time. All the animals spoke the same language. And just like some people nowadays, they played tricks on one another. Us and all his acts, he lived a peaceful and happy life. One evening during the winter season, it chanced that he... fun with this though tonight. So you're going to choose a card. I'm going down the creek and there is a moose in front of me and I don't know where to go to get around the moose. And I tell you this was a trip that did not go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> One beautiful September morning I embarked upon a very memorable road trip. At that exact moment, she looked down and found the lost cell phone. <laughs> Buddy, um, so imagine it's Imagine it's 1944. Well, 1944, Jack and Elsie Ellsworth, and I always wonder if that was her, her real name, or is that the nickname, maybe? <laughs> they came here uh, for their first summer during World War II and looked upon this, this property here, and I would imagine had a vision, right? A vision for what it could become, how they might spend summers here. Up there, as we get closer, you're going to see tons of life in the garden that was not there when Ellsworth was working on it because he liked his granite clean. Okay. But that biotite over time changed. It changed with heat and pressure, okay? The first thing that happened, of course, is we had our molten earth and there was a volcano! <laughs> and up from the volcano came the lava. These are things that you find here. You will find nice here as a form of crushed rock. Mr. Ellsworth called it frosting. We're going to be entering the rock gardens from below. We're going to walk over by a guest cabin. But it was popular and he saw it as fun and popular, I'm sure. That's my best guess at that. But so one of them is still standing. Yeah. And you know, granite proper. It doesn't have a whole lot of lichen on it. Um, this, folks, is the site of the Ellsworth's home here on, on the Capitol Peninsula. <laughs> so we're going to do a journaling activity in partners today. I kind of coined the term for this journaling activity Mystery Science Theater, mm -hmm. although it's not the actual Mystery Science Theater with the little robots and the bad movies. You are going to basically look at a plot of land that you are going to find and we've got little pieces of rope that you're going to use to put around that area. You can do a circle or whatever shape you would like to and you're going to just watch that piece of land and you're going to look to see what is there. So is it grass? Is it moss? Are there ants? Are there different things? So it really takes some focus and attentiveness and it allows at that. But so one of them is still standing. Yeah. And you know, uh, so welcome to day three. Woo! Yeah, so we have had an amazing morning already at Ellsworth. Did you love Ranger Mark and Jenny? Yeah, yeah. great, great. Um, Moss is a field fellow with the Voyagers Conservancy, but she is a North Shore naturalist. Ooh. 
So can we give it up for Naturalist Moss? All right. Hello, everyone. So depending on what plant you're looking at, what berry, what tree it is, there's different parts that can be eaten. So some plants you can eat the whole thing. Other plants you should probably only eat the part that we know you can eat. And the general rule of thumb if you are foraging at all, whether it's berries for sure or different leaves or roots, is if it's bitter, it's a spitter. If it's bitter, it's a spitter. If you're biting into something and you taste it with your mouth and it tastes bitter, your body is telling you, no, thank you. And if you don't pay attention to that, your stomach and the rest of your body will tell you later. So listen to your mouth and um, pay attention to what things taste like. Sometimes berries, like maybe thimble berries, um, has anyone here had a thimble berry before? Okay. Okay. Thimble berries, they look kind of like raspberries. Yeah. So well, let's see what we got here. Don't swallow, just chew it up. I will underline. Nice and tapery. They're really beautiful and they're called pearly everlasting because they last through the whole winter. Oh, oh. yeah. Hey everybody. Hi there. All right, we are next to three very important trees right now. We have this tree, which is the cedar, northern cedar, also known as Nokomis Gizik in Ojibwe. Then we'll talk a little bit about this pine tree here. This is a very cool pine tree. Spruce trees and fir trees tend to look pretty similar. So very knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions as best as I can. We were very appreciative. It's been a great project all summer. Those of you that have done it know that this is a beautiful project. Uh, Caitlin has three of them. We'll have three of them now. Um, and as a small gift, we have a Well, I'm Austin Hamkins. I am a field biologist with the Voyager's Wolf Project, which studies wolves both in Voyager's National Park and a pretty good area south of the park. Um, and that's largely just because there's more access um, to the different things that we do in that area. Um, I've been doing this, this is my ninth year doing this. And I, how I got here, I, I honestly stumbled into this. I was, um, I was a biology major in college and normally when you're <laughs> thank you. We just thank Austin so much yeah. for this. Yeah. Yeah. both our STEAM in the Park uh, program and teachers who are connected to Voyager's National Park and wanting to get out on the water. So we've got Ranger Tim, who's going to be Ranger Tim. And then we've got uh, Chris Hempstead, who is not only a local teacher here in International Falls, but also an incredible geologist. So uh, we've got an incredible day planned, and we also have a special guest here today, which is um, Tanya, our chief of special <laughs> Uh, the Conservancy in to partner with the park um, and it's really been uh, instrumental in building the Voyager's Classroom Initiative which is the program that got you all here. Oh, yes. um, so we are so excited for Tanya to be here. To well first of all welcome to Voyager's National Park. I know that you've um, spoken um, with Superintendent Bob DeGross, right? Mm -hmm. And Shannon spent some time with you yeah. as well yes. and I hope that went well. It did. Oh, yeah. and I'm Stacy. I originally from southeast Wisconsin. I teach in Deer River, Minnesota. My name is Chris Olson. We live in Deer River. We teach at Deer River School. Um, I'm originally from Chicago. I'm 
Leah Sickman. I teach, I live in Cloquet, Minnesota, which is by Duluth. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Lulu, or actually Louise Kalaga. I'm from Riverside, Illinois. Mm -hmm but I teach in LaGrange. Uh, my name is Tim Shannon. I'm originally from North Carolina. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a ranger here. Uh, this is my fifth park, and I love Voyagers. And I'm not just saying that um, just because, but uh, I love each park that I go to, and I learn a little bit about the area and things. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this is really great for me. I teach high school in the falls and middle school. And <laughs> you know what? I, talking rocks and talking geology is really great. namesake of the park, the Voyagers. Um, I know Bob, uh, superintendent, he came by and, and talked a little bit about it with you folks, but I just wanted to give a little bit more insight as to why that's so special to this area here. So, um, we, you guys, I don't know if you noticed the big cliff um, yeah. as we were coming in over there. For jumping? The, for jumping, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're jumping later. Um, so, uh, this is all, this whole area right here is granite, which is formed from a magma chamber, right? So this is all cooling, deep, magma cooling deep within the crust. And it's intruding upward. You guys remember those subduction zones I was talking about, right? They're melting. And then that magma is intruding upward into the overlying Quetico sediments of the Quetico Ocean. So we're kind of, we're, at, we're deep below the bottom of that Quetico Ocean and we're in one of those magma chambers. And this magma chamber is really kind of special. It's a really late stage pulse of magma. It's one of the youngest pulses. So at this point, we're probably talking at about... If you're feeling very artistic, I have chart paper and markers downstairs. You can make a poster. <laughs> so it's up to you how deep you want to go. And we'll have a little time to share as we kind of close out our trip. Conservancy, Brianna, thank you so much for having us and taking care of all this today and for Nicole for all the logistics. Chris, thank you for being such a great nerd. Thank you. That's <laughs> what we can give a scientist, right? Right on. I want to thank our amazing um, teachers who just bit the bullet and came not knowing who we were or what we might do. I know you thank raised you. your eyebrows a little bit when we said take you. Thank you. Thank you. was your outside? Stuff. <laughs> but we are uh, yeah. I am. I am. am. Junior Ranger. A junior, junior Ranger. I'll protect. I'll protect. Far from danger. Far from danger. I will not pick. I will not pick. pick. The plants. The plants. I won't step on. I won't step on. The ants. The ants. No animals will get my food. No, no animals will get my food. And I won't litter. I won't litter. Because it's rude. Because it's rude. My job is never done. My job is never done. This Ranger life. This Ranger life. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. All right, for the last 12 camps, we have been uh, sampling the amazing art to street of Bonnie Shalini, and we have mailed her a card at every camp to thank her, but today we're going to hand deliver our card to her. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh! Today. Um, thanks again to the Conservancy, particularly Brianna and Cole. I don't know, but just riding on a boat makes me tired. Mm -hmm. just being out there in the sun and stuff. But it was a great day. We still have a lot to do. And this is called Paint Chip Poetry. In the middle of your table, there is a stack of cards, which you deal out seven to everyone without you looking at them. But once you get yours, you can look at yours. The youngest person at the table will start. 
and that person, when I give them the prompt, they will start laying down cards. I really had to look in the closet because my skirt had a grass stain. <laughs> That's my favorite. All right, Romeo. Right. Kick, kick, kick us off, Romeo. Ooh. Ooh. Foggy Harbor. Rodney's going to drop chart paper in the middle of your table in just a few minutes. And we're going to ask Michelle's table to focus on ecosystems, things you learn here, things you already teach, things that you can connect to it, including videos, books, Websites. We're going to dump for 10 minutes and then we're going to do a switch. We are Firefly friends forever entwined. In this journey, memories we've defined. Together we've shared laughter and tears, celebrating the beauty of the passing years. So, that was a book. <laughs> you are, if you want to be, our official <laughs> Firefly friends. There's something special about bringing people together and accepting them for exactly who they are. <laughs> we wish only the best for you, and we thank you for coming and joining us on this journey. And we hope that we will remain in touch as friends forever. So my point is, there is a legacy to be had as, as teachers. And, and all of you are doing what you're doing, I believe, because you have a passion for it. And you never know how you might influence the lives of a young person, right? Yes. And how, how impactful that is. And it's not just that, that one student, but it, it's exponential, you know? The, the, the lives of their children and their grandchildren. And it's just, it's so exponential, you know, to hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands. And as you're on this trip, this week, I just want to give you something to think about. And that is, what might your legacy be? Each of you have a passion, right? Each of you have an opportunity to, to make an impact on thousands of lives, just like Jack Ellsworth did. You've got that opportunity to, to sow into young people's lives and people of all ages for generations to come. Be imaginative of what you do here, what you bring back to the classroom, the kind of exponential impact that might have and the legacy, just like my dad was able to have, that you in turn might have for thousands of others for generations to come. So that was just on my heart this year. You want me to howl right now? Yes. 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 All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> We're ready. Aren't these just the cutest? Oh, they are. Oh, awesome. <laughs> there go. Those are awesome. I didn't have to play on TV. You got to play on I see someone go, I go. Yeah. I, that stick was Because I'm not going to be left behind. No. <laughs> yeah, I do that one. So yours is delicious? <laughs> <laughs> I am delicious, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, so if you need to put a little squirt down your breast area and then get in the water and just do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight, woo! Feel free to do that if you want to go.